Hello everyone, welcome to the Music Talks Podcast and I'm your host Bobby Rose. So with me today I have a senior of mine that I call Mr. Miracle. And the reason I call him Mr. Miracle is because in every performance that he does, it's always tip top. There's no like uh, doing one for professional purposes and doing another just for fun, no. In every performance that he puts out, it's always to the peak of his abilities. He's a piano performance major, so his piano skills are A+. Plus. But at the same time, he all also plays the bassoon and he has performed for a lot of uh, contexts such as the MPYO and KL Pack and so on. And yet, every single time I play, I see him play, he will always have this focused mood. But when he's off his instrument, he will be the happiest, friendliest face ever. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy to have my senior with me here, Mr. Chun Wang. Uh, hello everyone, yeah, I'm Chun Wing and nice to meet you all and get to know you all. Yeah. Hey, how you been? How, how have you been this whole year, this oh, whole two um, years? Yeah, I'm doing okay, I guess. Uh, it's COVID season, yeah, but I'm still surviving, <laughs> at least. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I saw that you're one of the people who are still putting out like online concerts, online performances. So it's not really surviving. Right? You're still having a good time over there. Um, yeah, <laughs> before MCO now, yeah, you know, it's MCO time again. But yeah, before that, we ha- did manage to make, uh, perform a live stream concert with my friends. And yeah, it's very fun. It's a good experience. Awesome. So before we get into that live stream, I just want to... I just want to explain like the layout of your house because your house seems to have like a natural performance platform area that you just invite people like it's it's like a event space is that it <laughs> Oh yeah yeah it's designed by my mother uh, yeah she like western style and just happens to have good acoustic since everything is like wooden the floor is wood uh-huh. And the piano is also just placed just nice and it fits the space. Good yeah. for chamber performances. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get so I get so jealous every time like people come over and you just have like your own uh what you used to have like a once a month performance at your place, right? Uh, yeah, something like that to prepare for recitals maybe and to play with some friends. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So like uh going back to the live performances that you were doing you, you did have that um Christmas home performance with some of your mates and I found a mistake and I I have it I have some of it here it's called the chamber music live stream and the virtual chamber concert series so can you tell us about those Oh yeah uh it's actually quite interesting like one of my friend I actually know quite a lot of friends from other university like Mainly this group of friends, they are from UCSI mm-hmm. and because now that during that time it's locked down, there's no live performances or anything and they want to have at least something to show that they've done their chamber performance they, because they took the course but it's oh. all done recording, yeah. So they want to have at least a live feel of it. Then they know that I have a good space to try, <laughs> so we try to arrange for our performance and yeah, it's a good experience. It's very fun. Was oh, it you approach them or did they approach you? Um, actually, they approached me. I was not supposed to perform actually because oh. it should be only for them. It's like for the first part, it's the, only the Brahms trio, three mm. of my friends from UCSI performing for their chamber. Mm. And then they said, um, do you want to try and perform together too? Then, okay. So they have another group of friends which uh, needed a pianist then. So I just agreed quite last minute. But yeah, <laughs> we did uh, practice a bit. Had about three rehearsals. Then we just go for it. Yeah, and then perform Splendid. live. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Was it like really different? Like play without, with little to no rehearsal. You did say like three rehearsals. Is that a normal uh, thing or usually you have like way more or way less? Usually we would prefer to have more rehearsals okay. if possible. But since like sometimes performance, like you got caught last minute to replace someone, you always have to be prepared. So it's also a good experience. Like even though it's a bit rush. Yeah, but we have that adrenaline drive, you know, mm-hmm. so 
yeah, we have set a deadline and just try our best. So it might not be perfect, but that's the best that we can do during that short period of time. Ah. And, and does, that, does that actually fall under the category of uh, performance skills? Like to be able to... Mm. It's something like, um, I assume it's something like uh, public speaking, you know? You're given 30 seconds mm. to read. Okay, maybe not 30 seconds to prepare. Like you're given a, oh, two minutes to prepare something and then you play on the spot. Is it considered like uh, an impromptu aspect of your performance mm. skills as well? Yes, it's very important, especially for a musician, right? Since you might like last minute, suddenly someone is sick, you cannot do it, they cannot do it. And then you you are called to replace them. That means they have a very good opinion of you. So they ask yeah. you to replace them because they expect you to be able to do it. And then it's also a good chance, like maybe to get to know people. And that's also like a branch of my piano aspect. That's also how I joined MPYO for their first concert because they don't have any bassoon player. Right. And they needed a bassoon player. Then I just said yes. Even though <laughs> during that time, I'm not that good yet. Yeah. Even for KLPEC also, my first KLPEC performance, because there's another concert with clashes with KLPEC. So a lot of the good players, especially bassoonists, they are not available. So they have to ask around and my teacher recommended me. So uh, yeah, it's good to always be prepared. That's why you sh oh, should always practice. Like now we are free. <laughs> and whenever there's an opportunity coming, knocking around the door, yeah, you can just go for it and try your best. I, I think now of all times, it's like the, it's the most clear uh, schedule that one can have to practice, right? Usually it's <laughs> traffic jam, la, don't have time. La, you know? <laughs> yeah, usually we're very busy with all things, especially like me. I have to juggle between my piano playing, my bassoon playing. Sometimes like, I've been caught to perform for like sometimes. And so they also don't have a steady second bassoonist because they only have one bassoon. And you know, orchestra, especially in a symphony orchestra, they need two bassoon. So I've been caught to go with, and play with NSO and they only have two rehearsals. So you must always be prepared. Like you get caught last minute. You only have one week to prepare. <laughs> you have to play the piece. And yeah, you at least get some income to cover some costs. Yeah, yeah. everyone is losing money now, right? Yeah. And especially in a in a country as small as this, like eventually everybody will meet everyone anyways, right? So <laughs> yes, especially if you're in the music scene, classical music scene is actually quite small. Most people know each other, so you have to go out and make a name for yourself, I guess. Yeah. So actually, I I just wanted to ask about that, right? Because uh, I'm more familiar of, of the jazz side, whereby if I can't if, if somebody can't uh, do a performance and then they'll just call me to replace them and it's usually a short no uh, short moment's notice like a few days and it makes sense you know like just play for a pub and then okay I have my pub playlist you know like some of the people I've interviewed and like Justin whatever they have their cafe playlist or their cruise playlist mm. but if it's for you right you specifically have to cater for them like if they are accompanying yes. another person, right? Yeah. So would that yes. make it much, much more terrible or is that part of the challenge? And you just accept it wholeheartedly? Um, for classicals, it's a bit more challenging, I guess, because we have to read up from the score. And especially if you're playing for juries, competition or audition, mm -hmm. they expect you to follow the score exactly as written by the composer. So you cannot like yeah. just improvise or do anything if you don't know. You, it's good to be able to improvise. It's a good skill to have. But for classical musicians, you have to be a good sight reader and yeah. have a good general knowledge of the music history. So you can play the piece as intended. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I, I actually uh, remember a, a statement from a friend of mine always performing orchestra. He told me actually the name of the game is not skill. I mean, it's not only skill. It's not only your sense of musicality. Actually, the name of the game is just sight reading. If you can sight read better than the person next to you, then you'll be a better player. <laughs> yeah, sight reading is super important, especially yeah. if you're a piano.
tennis, you can't just expect to play solo. You have to accompany too sometimes to get some extra income. Yeah. Yes, because solo performances right now, mm, it's a bit hard, especially with COVID. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting when you say right now. Like before this, it was still possible. Like, did you actually do solo piano performances outside of university? Mm. Yeah, uh, it is possible. Like, it's you can sometimes join some competition or like organize your own recital, and yeah. But depending on personal preference, uh, for me, I would prefer to accompany because I like to play with other people. Since like you know, pianists they always stay inside and lock inside their room, yeah, being alone. <laughs> yeah, so it's fun to make music with other people. Maybe because I play in orchestra a lot, so I get to know a lot of friends. So we always sometimes just side read, find a score, and just play, make some music together. Wrong or right, you just try your try your best. Eh? <laughs> but yeah. but I guess that's that's how you would improve, right? Like going back to that story of you, like you claim I I would disagree wholeheartedly, but you know you claim at that time you weren't that good. But then that's how you improve when you're not good. You just say yes. Then you keep falling and falling, yeah. but eventually you would get, get uh better, right? Yes, yeah. but just sometimes you have to also plan ahead in advance. You have to know your level. If, be realistic, like, lah. You are, yeah, yeah. Be realistic, like if you are grade one, someone asks you to play a grade eight piece, <laughs> you better don't choose that. <laughs> you don't accept it. If not, you really just like. You destroy your own name. Sometimes, yeah. like I regretted accompanying some of the players because I thought it was easy until I tried that. Oh no, it's so hard. <laughs> so I really put in a lot of effort, and it was not perfect, but I managed to survive. Yeah. So know where you're at, and especially plan ahead, and. Check your piece or your level of playing before accepting the challenge. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And and do you actually have the choice to like if you, if you accept from someone and then you realize that oh I'm not that good in this, then you can like pass it along or. Okay, for I I, I maybe is... maybe I don't know. It's it's not ethical or something. But um... would that be a viable option? If you really, really have no choice, then I guess that would be the best option. But in the classical scene, it would not be good impression for the person you are helping because, uh, like, they ask you to help, and usually, you help once. If they have a good impression of you, they ask you to come and help again twice. Then another time, next time, yeah. So maybe if this time you rejected, then they know. Oh, actually, this person cannot play this kind of pieces well, or cannot. Mm, like cannot play last minute replace someone. Yeah, yeah, something that uh not to their standard at least, mm -hmm. and then maybe they might not consider you for the next time, so it will be hard in the future. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So you you do mention that you have like a fair share of bassoon playing, bassoon performances, and your piano performances. So, a uh, two part question. The first one is, which one do you have more? Like which which do you perform more as a pianist or as a bassoonist, and second part is which one do you prefer to perform perform in? Okay, a good question. <laughs> um, okay, before I answer the question personally, my preference, I actually love the bassoon more than the piano. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry to say that, but yeah, well, uh, it, it, it I'll edit bit... this part out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a bit sad that I get I got introduced to the bassoon a bit late, but yeah, I've started my piano a bit too far ahead to stop now. So yeah, okay. In terms of performance, right? I think bassoon I might perform more because currently Malaysia there's not much bassoonists around that can play at a level that's suitable for the orchestra. Actually, from my experience, I know that there's actually quite a lot of bassoonists, but most of them stay in at their own school. Like, there's a lot of Chinese school orchestra, and they have bassoon actually. At, like in Penang, I know in KL, there's some, and Klang, Ipoh. Yeah, there 
are bassoonists around, but they always just stay at their own comfort zone inside their school. So for performances outside, like in orchestra, we are lacking bassoonists, and I'm a bit adventurous. I like mm-hmm. to go and explore, it's because I always feel that my music knowledge is a bit lacking, in a sense, because I've always been in a music center for my most of my music journey mm-hmm. until I went for my degree study in UPM. So after I entered UPM, I found out that I might be a bit lacking in a sense. So I go out and explore more and join orchestras and keep saying yes to almost every orchestra. I think I played in almost every single orchestra in KL. I can list one that I didn't play that's SSO, Slango mm-hmm. Symphony Orchestra. Mm-hmm. Most of the orchestra I think I've played with them at least once. Nice, nice. Yeah. So how how long until you fly over to Sabah Sarawak and join the orchestra? <laughs> Actually, a good question. I was supposed to fly over to join the Jazz Sultan Philharmonic Orchestra, I think. Yeah, Jazz oh. at Sabah. Uh, but that's what uh, something interesting happened. I got a call last minute from MPYO. Uh-huh. Actually, I just started learning the person for almost one year, one and a half years. Then I auditioned for MPYO. But I did not pass the audition. I was just a substitute player. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, for that time. And then, because for the 10th year anniversary MPYO concert, they didn't have enough bassoonists. Then they called me last minute. And then I checked. Oh, it actually clashes with my camp at Sabah with yeah. JPO. And I already bought my flight ticket to Sabah. <laughs> So that time I had a bit of a difficulty like choosing, should I go Sabah for that music camp or should I stay in KL to join MPYO? And then I considered further, if I rejected this MPYO offer, I don't think I will have another chance to play MPYO. And before that, it was my dream to be able to play in MPYO. So in the end, I decided to accept the phone call. It was like in the morning after I just sleep and then I just wake, woke up and then I saw my phone ringing. I think, oh, hello. <laughs> oh, this is a call from MPYO. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a very funny story. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that's how I joined MPYO from a substitute player. Then I just sneak in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then after they know that I can play the person, then yeah. I've just been naturally upgraded from substitute into a permanent main player, main member for MPO oh, person nice, section. Nice, nice. Yeah, and my first concert, the tenth year anniversary, was with Kevin Field. Oh yeah. wow! Okay. Yeah. Before that, also I had some performances with Kevin Field. I think that might have helped. I yeah. played in Bentley a bit for their youth orchestra. Uh, yeah, I really explored a lot. <laughs> and also, I played once for the ASEAN Youth Orchestra. Oh, also yeah. conducted by Kevin Field. Okay. Yeah, ASEAN. The, the one that you were okay, talking about, so this, the, the, this, the one that they called. What, what year was this? Um, the MPYO 10th year anniversary concert. Uh, I think you can just go that. It's quite easy to search the date. I forgot already. I think maybe it's about three years ago. Oh, no. Okay, now maybe it's four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so. Maybe, yeah. That, that, was, that was insane. Yes. <laughs> but Besides, you see, opportunity just comes knocking. Then you just have to make a decision. Like, actually, that time, I don't think I'm qualified to play for MPYO or so. Yeah. But I just tried my best and yeah, so that's how I joined. <laughs> but but you didn't do like, uh, hello, I'm looking for a uh, bassoonist. Like, Excuse me, I think you have the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> I was very happy. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, from there, I get to know a lot of friends. And sometimes music, I think the most important thing about music, right, is the connection that you make. Mm-hmm. Because your friend's friend might need help, like, Sometimes they need a pianist, so they might call me to accompany them because I get to know them from playing in orchestra. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So you see, you're like, I'm, if I'm just a pianist, one person, 
I usually just accompany few people, and uh, or maybe just yeah in the chamber five people. I get to know limited number of people, but I joined an orchestra and usually orchestra is quite big. Uh, even community orchestra also like usually standard about thirty plus fifty maybe sometimes like MPO all the time. Oh, it's a lot. And then from there you get to know a lot of people and they can start to introduce you. So networking, yeah, is very good. That's true. It, it, uh, I'm really happy that you said it that way because uh, even in the episode before this, I had a guest, uh, Lin Kui. I don't know if you remember her. Mm. Lin Kui. Uh, yeah. yeah. She, piano performance major as well from UPM. And she was also talking about the same thing. You know, she joins uh, competitions. She joins all these uh, performances. And it's all about building connections. So now that you have mentioned it that way further on, so it actually solidifies that statement that just because you're... Uh, you are a solo player in one way or another or you perform in orchestra but it it doesn't always have to be about your performances it could also be for accompanying other people so that's that's a very inspiring thing that you just said you know oh yeah okay i'm glad that it connects somehow yeah yeah so really uh because like previously like i said i'm mostly studying and learning piano at the music center mm -hmm. and so usually music center you know lessons we had one-on-one -on -one with the teacher just come and go and come and go just like have yeah. regular lessons maybe sometimes that's competition the teacher will introduce you to go but <laughs> it was quite rare during my time yeah that's not yeah. so much competition like now everywhere that you can see that like, oh you can join this competition and there and here and there but during my time like i just had music lesson one on one with my teacher. So that's not much connection. And I didn't know that's an orchestra. I don't even know what is an orchestra at that time. I just know, okay, piano, violin, cello, this and that, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Let, let's just get down to it. Like, what do you actually play? Like, is there a specific genre that you play? Like, if you, if you call yourself, like, int introduce yourself to other musicians, like, what do you label yourself as? Do you spe just play, or oh, I just play classical, or I just play contemporary? Because I do remember that you played um, Paganini in jazz for your recital. Yes. I, I could be wrong. So I, I'm not really yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you take everything that you can, or is there anyone that you like in, in particular? Okay, yeah. Actually, I did play Paganini jazz, and... Just something interesting to share yeah. before I entered UPM. Like, I actually love pop music. I started piano properly through pop music, like playing J. Chow songs, ah. playing Taylor Swift songs, and yeah, all those yes. pop songs, and maybe anime songs also. Yeah. yeah. So I understand why people would prefer to label themselves as a pop musician or classical musician or jazz musician and also I, when i entered upm i actually have a bigger and bigger interest in jazz actually oh <laughs> yeah i was actually considering should i be a jazz major or a classical major then i was thinking hmm okay i like pop <laughs> then i think i'm thinking that i actually played quite a lot of years playing pop songs and i'm starting to feel a bit uh, not a good word, but maybe a bit fed up with it. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes pop sounds, the pop progression, chord progression is always the same. Yeah. Uh, and turning around, is, it's just repeat. And yeah, I love it previously, but it's starting to get a bit boring. And I was thinking like exploring. And I used to hate classical, but I was thinking to give classical another try. And in terms of jazz, I didn't have much knowledge about jazz. I just know it's very nice. I like the chord. Like yeah. chord seven, all those chord sevens is very beautiful and nice. And uh, I was thinking like, ah, it might be similar to pop. I was thinking, ah, maybe I can go classical first, improve my technique. After my technique improve, I can still go to jazz and learn it, right? Oh, how long was I? <laughs> <laughs> because jazz was much, 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 much more complicated than I thought. It's yeah. totally different from pop. Yeah, so I had a wrong mindset. I didn't have a good music background. <laughs> Yeah, but if I really have to label myself, I might label myself as a classical musician. But I do have interest in everything though. I like pop, I like jazz, I like classical. Yeah, that's true. And 
it, it's it's interesting that you say it that way that um <clears throat> you are able to transfer like your logic is about the same as mine whereby because of my classical percussion experience i'm able to transfer it onto my drum playing compared to the other way around if i actually went straight into drumming but then you know all my tone my technique uh you guys have ornaments i have uh we, percussionists have rudiments right all those things those technical mm. things it it will be more solidified it will be more um strengthened if you come from a classical perspective but now that you mentioned it that way do you think that there's like a hierarchy i do you imply a hierarchy whereby pop is the easiest one or classical and then jazz or even like pop and then classical and then uh, pop and then jazz and then classical or is there like a, everything is hard actually <laughs> it's that is that the hidden truth that not a lot of people know Hmm. <laughs> it's a bit tricky to answer, but I—I uh, I mean, personally, for me, my yeah, yeah, yeah. opinion is that from so many years of playing pop, I might say pop might be the easiest. Uh, in t- I mean, if you want to label it that way, hierarchy. Uh, for me, actually, classical and jazz is almost the same. I mean, they are both equally as complicated, mm. but uh, pop is the easier one. Huh? So, <laughs> personally. Um, just that a lot of things stems from classical, right? If you learn music history, everything started medieval and then baroque, classical, and then yeah, twentieth century, romantic period. So I think there's a lot of classical influence everywhere, even in jazz and pop. So music in the end is still music. Okay, everything's. Are uh, connected, so yeah, just don't have that snobby attitude like you're a very arrogant. I am a classical musician, and I'm the best. You are all much worse than me, especially pop singers or whatever. I do actually like a lot of pop singers. Some of them really sings very beautifully, and yeah, there should not be uh like an arrogant attitude towards. Anyone, we are all still musician, right? We should not look down on anyone. Even some pop singers like Jay Chou, I know, he's actually classically trained. Even though he's singing pop song, he's he actually has very good back music background. Yeah, so yeah. you should not say every pop singers they are bad musician. That's why they are pop musicians. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yeah. So now, now that we've gone here and you already explained about all your experiences, is there? Um, in your future plans, right? Is there a, a tangential point that you see that you can move forward from here, like taking from your orchestral experience, your contem- contemporary playing, your jazz playing, and your you know your different instruments playing? Uh, wh- what's your what's your next step? New instrument yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think is more than enough. Yeah, uh, actually, I do have an interest in starting my own orchestra. <laughs> Uh-huh. Because from all my experience playing, I found out. I, I think this is the most important thing for everyone. You have to find out what's your real interest. Like, I thought I like to perform on the piano. Like usually, we, if you say performing on piano, we're saying solo works, right? Yeah. But I realized that's not my real interest. I actually like to play with friends, play with other people, like chamber, and stuff, and like. Chamber, you can be a small group, a big group, and an even bigger group is like an orchestra. Yeah, because playing in an, an orchestra, it really broaden my view on stuff. Like you start to listen more deeply, like pay attention to everyone. It's not like you are just playing yourself. Like piano, you can always take your time. You can play fast, slow. You, you are playing alone. You can like you can take control of the pace. But in an orchestra, everyone has to follow, and uh, maybe the conductor or the concert master. Yeah. We all tr- try to have a cohesive idea and play together, make music together as a unit. And when you truly listen to a very good orchestra, uh, one of the best orchestra that I love the most is like Berlin Field. Almost I was just every gonna concert say. that I hear, yeah. yeah, almost every concert I hear of them play, I will have goosebumps because I can hear like everyone is playing like in one unit. Yeah, and you can hear the music flows just very naturally. It can even sound like a piano performance if you understand what I mean. Like piano is like one person, you control everything, right? Yeah. And when you hear a really good orchestra, you can feel like 
everything is under control. It's like one whole unit, yeah. all hundred musicians playing as one. Yeah, you can feel the music. Then I think that would be the best. Yeah. So just maybe find your interest. Maybe explore a bit more, like me. Play in orchestra. Play in piano. Play some chamber with your friends. Make some music together and see what's your favorite niche. Maybe find your niche. You help us. Awesome. But uh, before I let you go, just a real quick question: Would um studies in conducting probably be one of your next plans? Because you did mention like you might want to create your own orchestra or your own ensemble. Would would do you think you should study in uh being a conductor, being a historic his musical historian to understand the orchestra side, the so the sociological aspects of it? Would that be important? Oh yes, it will be super important. Uh, I think the thing that you mentioned about music historian side is like you have, uh, you analyze the music background, the history, mm. and everything. It's something that's very important for every musician. <laughs> it should not be only like only the conductor should study like music history. The conductor should know everything. But I think every proficient musician or those that as aspiring to be a professional musician, they should do that. Like study the background of every single music and understand the music deeper in a theoretical sense. And yeah, uh, I did took some conducting course twice. Mm -hmm. One under Kevin Field. He is actually the conductor of MPYO and MPO previously. Mm -hmm quite some years ago yeah and another one is under mr jared our nice. current upm lecturer and that's yeah. our conductor yeah. yeah so i've learned a lot from conducting and i have come to realize maybe conducting might not be my strong point but i think everything starts mm, like everything that you just started on right you're not very good at it you always need to practice so maybe i just need more practice then I can be a better conductor, but yeah, conducting, I'm considering, actually, yeah. Oh, awesome. Uh, I, I like it when you mention it that way because it actually vibes with something that I truly believe in. Some people always say like, you know, when you start something very fresh, then people say like, oh, this is going to end badly. I would think that it won't end badly. It would start badly, but then you don't know where it's going to end. It might go worse, but it might go better, you know? It might start badly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything that start will feel awkward. That's why even when I just started playing piano, actually I hated the piano when I was young. I was forced to learn the piano. Uh, a, a bit of background story. Yeah. So my mother forced me to play the piano since I was young. I think I started all, when I was four or five. I hated it so much. I started at Yamaha. Uh, I actually don't know what I learned <laughs> from 5 to 12, right, I think. Yeah, I, and I can't even read one single note. I always hated the piano. I cry when I go for piano lessons. I don't ever practice for my lessons. I remember very clearly, I never once even touched the piano unless I'm in the piano class. No. Yeah, so I can't read any note at all. Until I was 12, so it's like almost uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. 7 years, I've learned the piano, I can't even read one single note. Can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I've stopped, I continue to stop and continue a lot of times, I think maybe about at least 10 times I've stopped my piano lessons and I continue. Every Every time I say I want to stop, is me. And everything, every time I say I want to continue, it's also me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I, maybe I didn't want to give it up, but yes. Yeah. So when I was 13, I moved to another music center and I escaped from the Yamaha course. I think. Uh, maybe Yamaha is not just for me. It's yeah. For me. Yeah. And then I think with the new teacher, I start to explore a bit more. Yeah. And then I started to learn how to read notes properly. And then I found a pop score, pop song score, 
by Jay Chow. It's called nice. Unsing. It's called Silence. <laughs> and my mother used to have a bit of lesson also. And one good thing, because she also cannot read the notes, she written down every single note on the pop song sheet. Oh. Okay? Yeah, so when I took the score, I saw this. Actually, I cannot, I cannot read any Chinese. I don't know what song is this. I, that time, I, saw, I don't listen to any pop song. I need to listen to anime song, Japanese song. <laughs> I like anime a lot, and I play a lot of games. <laughs> yeah, so when I just play, it sounds familiar. I mean, I don't listen to any song, so I played the J Chao song, and then I slowly played it. All the notes are written, so at least I can still play it. I don't need to read the notes, I just need to find the notes where the notes are. The song is actually about 5 minutes, but I don't know why at that time I feel very motivated. I just take out the score and just play. I never practice piano. <laughs> and I just sit down there, play from the first part to the last part. It took nice. me about one hour. You know, nice. you play one part, uh, stuck here, stuck there, continue, yeah. stuck here, stuck there. Yeah. And then I think, hey, it sounds good. I didn't realize I like music, especially like pop song, like Jay Chow song. Yeah. So I need to thank Jay Chow. <laughs> and then, from one I'll pass hour, the message. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so like, I keep playing it every single day, like from one hour, I keep playing from beginning to the end, like, it's a bad practice, but yeah, I just tried, and from one hour, it become 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, yeah, the 10 minute period is the longest, because this song was actually quite hard, it's about grade 5 standard, and the time, I think I'm about roughly a grade 2 pianist, yeah. Yeah, so then I keep playing too. So the 10 minute is like the challenging part, like how to make it sound smoothly. So I keep practicing for another few more months, only the song. And then from 10 minutes, it becomes 6 minutes, 6 minutes, 6 minutes, 6 minutes, finally, 5 minutes. Yeah, Fantastic. it's the original song duration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like everything, I just blindly rush through it, like hit the wall and just keep banging the wall until the wall breaks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and from then on, I started to develop an interest in piano, and I realized, oh, okay, I like pop songs. So I just explore Google, print a lot of scores, a lot of songs, starting from something easy that I recognize. So I think it's good to explore and find something you like. Don't give up at the first sight of challenge, yeah? Yeah. And then now, because... I like pop songs and I keep printing a lot of different pop songs. The second pop song that I learned is Love Story by Taylor Swift. Yeah, ah. Same process from 30 minutes. This time it's better. Start up oh, 30, 30 minutes. minutes. <laughs> yeah, but this time there's no notes written. I mean, at least I write down every single note myself. Yeah, yeah. From the first bar to the last bar. 30 minutes, 10 minutes, yeah, then same process. Then I keep playing these two songs like forever. Every single day. Keep playing, playing, playing. I think I close my eye also can play the song. Nah. And then that's when I start to explore a bit of improvisation because that's the only two songs I can play and I like it but you keep repeating the same thing you get fed up right like eating yeah. the same food every day yeah then I explore and then I start to improvise a bit oh the left hand is very boring huh? very static then I try and move it a bit then, oh I can do this I can do this I do that yeah and then I learn to improvise by myself everything actually most of the thing I learn by myself so sometimes it's good if you find something you like and it's also a bit challenging because like everything I just simply play. I didn't have a good sense of rhythm, so my rhythm was very, very bad. It's feeling, you know, piano, we always play yeah. with feeling. Sometimes we like to play fast, we play fast, we play slow, we play slow. As long as the music keeps going. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but one good aspect of it is because I print a lot of scores and that's how my sight reading improve a lot. I can start to mm. study a lot of songs. Yeah, so always print something easy and play. And then you can improve your start reading. Yeah. That's how I improve, at least. That's my way. Yeah. And just make sure you start read with the correct reader. <laughs> Don't just this your feeling. Yeah. So in that sense, right, do you think that uh, it is quite detrimental or it's quite bad? I, I, I wouldn't say it's bad for, for kids to actually, you know, go for formal music classes. But you did say that you eventually learn a lot by yourself. So, like, for future generations, how do you think they should, do, do you think they should do what you did, like, go for music classes, but also learn themselves? Or do, do you think they should not go for music classes anyways, but just learn themselves 100%? Or? Because I feel like you, you had more growth by yourself, like, gro musical growth. Before that, you were just learning how to play an instrument. You weren't learning how to play music. 
you you literally only mentioned that oh I love music from 13 years old from 12 years old onwards so before that it was just you playing the piano not even playing songs on the piano you just play so yeah what what do you think about that okay yes this Uh, in the end, still the most important thing is having lesson. I mean, you can always try and learn it yourself. You can play something you like, maybe one or two pieces of songs. But I can assure you that you have a lot of bad habits. <laughs> like even for me, the only reason why I can learn it myself also because I had about seven years of. Piano playing, even though <laughs> I didn't practice, at least I still go for lessons. Yeah, it at least have I have a little bit of foundation, so I can continue onwards to learning by myself. And I still have a lot of bad habits I need to fix. There's most of the bad habits I fix it in my UPM years. My piano teacher, oh, she was very strict with me on the technique aspect, especially rhythm, because. Whenever we download any songs we like, right? We usually listen to it about at least maybe ten, maybe sometimes even fifty times. So the song is naturally in our head, and when we print out the score, we don't even read the rhythm. We just read the notes, then we can play it already because we already have, we already know how the song goes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So it's like you're feeling it, but you're not playing it yeah. correctly. The so melody is in your head. Know, yeah, 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 and you just need to know the correct notes, then you can play it already. Sometimes and just place your finger, practice, but you don't know how to translate what you are reading into what you're playing. Yeah. You're still you're just feeling it. I think it's very important to have a teacher. At least the teacher can guide you. One important thing is to find the right teacher to guide you into playing something that maybe you like. I seen a lot of students. I also taught some students. The pieces the teacher gave them, they don't really really like it, and they start to hate practicing because they play. They are playing a song, a piece that they don't really like. Mm -hmm. So sometimes maybe you can find out what kind of genre you like. Maybe some of you also like classical. You can always start from a simpler piece, but maybe some of you like pop song. You can start from pop song too. I don't mind. I mean, whichever interests you. And the most important thing for music, from my experience, is interest. I lost interest since I was ten years old because I've been playing a lot of pop song. I mean, a lot of classical during the class I had at Yamaha. So. I feel the songs, the pieces are so boring that <laughs> I don't have any interest to practice. <laughs> Until I found out Jay Chow, oh my god, his yeah. song sounds so nice. Yeah, so it's always interest and also finding the right teacher for you. A teacher is very important to guide you with the correct habits, especially if you are planning to pursue music seriously. Yeah, you can still find a teacher and learn music for fun, but. Yeah, if you want to pursue music seriously, you need to find the right teacher for you. Even if it, even if that means it, your you are your own best teacher, right? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I there are prodigies who learn the piano themselves and play to a very high standard. But I think the chances of that is quite low here because most of the pro. Just you didn't think of the. Uh, I mean, like in Malaysia, right? Our music education level is quite low, but actually, some countries overseas, every school it's compulsory to have at least some level of music education. Yeah. So, they at least they are exposed to it, and when they say they learn themselves, maybe they didn't seek a teacher, but in school they do have music education. So it's something like they do have. A teacher to guide them, at least in learning how to read the notes, mm -hmm. how to feel the rhythm. Yeah, so it's not a good choice if you're in Malaysia to <laughs> learn by yourself. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for sharing everything with with all oh. your experiences. You know, 
Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. So it's just sharing. Yeah, and it's very valuable. Is there any last words that you would want to like pass on to those that may want to follow in your footsteps of playing the piano and the like bassoon in one shot, maybe? <laughs> yeah, um, just be smart and plan your time properly because, like, since I'm playing two instruments, my piano and my bassoon, sometimes I can't balance how much I. Practice in between the two instruments. I'm not that consistent. Like bassoon, usually there's a lot of concerts. Like in orchestra, especially in Malaysia, there's no bassoonist. Yeah. Sometime in a week, I can have two or even three different concerts at three different places. I remember there's one month I have about eight concert. Uh, about five of the concerts, they are all totally different. It's not the same program. It's at different places, different time, different place. Uh, and I need to go for rehearsals. Yeah, so I couldn't balance my life properly <laughs> and learn to plan, accept what you can handle. Don't accept what's too much. Mm. And finding the right teacher. <laughs> Remember to also always try your best. You can only do your best, right? So if you... To try your best already, then I think that's more than enough. You don't beat yourself down like, oh, why I still cannot play this piece even after learning for one year? But I practice every day three hours. Um, just think it in another way, more positive way. Like, yeah. think of the progress you made. Mm -hmm. At least you could not play it perfectly, but somehow in this one year, this challenging piece that you set for yourself, you have managed to learn every single note and maybe even memorize it. Yeah, so at least you try your best. We, are, we all start on different stages of education, right? Like some people, maybe they started from three years old with a very, very good teacher. And then they are 10 years old, they can play every single difficult piece that you can imagine. But like for me, I hit the piano. I learned to, I learned to start the piano seriously when I was 13. And I have a lot of bad habit because I learned it, most of it by myself. Even though I do have a teacher, but I, yeah, I explore too many pieces and songs <laughs> by myself. So just always remember everyone's music education stages of learning is different. So just take it and accept it and just try your best. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Chung Wen. Okay, no problem. It's my pleasure. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to our podcast today. If you do have any questions pertaining to the topic that Chung Wong and I uh, discussed, you can just shoot us an email at aminbob13 at yahoo.com where I'll either get him to answer in a future episode or I'll reply to you myself personally. Thank you so much.